Hey everybody, today is August the 19th, uh, it's Thursday, 2015, and just wanted to give everybody an update on how, you know, wrapping everything up from yesterday. So I gave you the report from the doctor for the oncologist report um, yesterday that go over all of my tests, the breast MRIs, then the left breast biopsy, um, the... MRI of the chest, um, MRI of the pelvis, and MRI of the abdomen, countless blood tests. Um, I know I'm forgetting some other tests. It just was, oh, the biopsies, the needle core biopsies, the other needle core biopsies that were done on the left breast. It's just been just so many tests at the test. But God, you know, oh, the bone scan test. And you know, it's only the power of God. I'm telling you, there are days when I just cried. And, you know, since I work full time, I have to, you know, pick myself up. I might cry before the meeting and be like, <laughs> and then God, give me strength. God, give me strength. Increase my faith. Help, help faith. Help me to trust in you more. I believe God in you. Just give, increase my faith. And I get on that meeting and I call and I rock it, and no one would know the difference. There's only a few people at my job that I share what's going. I'm going through because we work together closely, and then, you know, it's good to have the support, not just emotionally, but on a business perspective. So, what happened next was that um, they reached out to me and was like, "Penny, I would never believe what you're going through, um, and the way you." conduct yourself for the job you know my job is very stressful um at this time so i need definitely need prayers i do have the support from my manager but at the same time when you know um for my chemo you know the chemo schedule right now will probably be the one day a week in marstown for those three hours and i work early in the day i start at seven and i don't end till like seven or eight so i always have extra time so i don't really need to count oh be less than 40 hours so even with all the arthritic pain, and I mean, I'm going to try to get a picture of the bone scan so you can see all the hot spots. And it's almost everywhere in my body, from my fingers to my toes, my tarsals, metatarsals, my heel. It was patella. It was everywhere. If you don't know what those things are, you should listen in class. You learned that like in fourth grade. So, <clears throat> and even in the clavicle area, they saw that too. Um... So, you know, the, the drugs yesterday helped a lot, the, the infusion of the steroids. Now, the bad news is that, you know, um, I got it infused, so it's going to go through my bloodstream pretty quickly. The bad news is that um, it makes you keep stay up. So I didn't want to stay up 24, 48 hours again. So I've stayed up before two days without being on steroids or um, prednisone on a high dose 60 milligrams. So they gave me 20 milligrams of the IV, um, Decadrol, I think it's called, is the IV um, form of the steroid. And it was 2 o'clock, and I was still up. So I took some Xanax, which has a secondary, it's, it's mainly prescribed for anxiety, but it also has secondary uses, um, such as muscle relaxant, which it works better than the tyridazine that I had. It just doesn't, that'll knock me out like mid-sentence, like... I mean, I'm straight up and on calls and knocked out like that. But I wake up like an hour or two later and I'm still in muscle pain. So the, the Xanax, not only does it um, give me muscle relief, but it also um, puts me asleep. So it was a Xanax versus the prednisone fight and the Xanax in the end won. I don't remember what time I fell asleep, but it was pretty shortly afterwards. And I drank something hot to kind of like, we're going to get this going and push this through. So... um. That was last night. Um, pray for me on my job. Like I said, I'm blessed that I can work from home and my manager is very supportive. But again, at the same point of her being supportive, I have, I manage a file that affects the organization globally and I work for a global organization. And with that, um, my previous manager left into a different role. She transitioned to a different role and never trained me on it. So I was just given this job as like, through a meeting, I found through a, a staff meeting about changes that Penny Lopez will now be managing our file, our taxonomy file. Hmm. So 
with that. Um, and there's over 4,278 commodities that I have to manage. No one understood how it was used before because our previous, um, my previous manager, when she left, she was ghost. We don't hear from her. So I had to go to the person who owned it before her. And he has been, I've been taking it upon myself, being proactive, having meetings with him. And he's been helping me through it um, and going through what the knowledge he knows. But then again, someone else had it for a couple of years after him, my previous manager, and it's just the best. So now at the same time, getting my chemo done um, every two years, all of the systems and there are hundreds of systems that feed into that use our taxonomy code to buy anything that's purchased for our company. Everything that's purchased for our company uses the commodity code, like a UPC code. And I manage that file. So that file has to be correct. And we have errors in the file to begin with already. But through the enterprise-wide uh, upgrade that's happening now, uh, my manager told me that I have to be the one to manage it, to come up with a project plan, a Microsoft project of each one of the deliverables. When I don't know anything about this, I was able to find my previous manager's file. So I'm going to try to augment that. And to work from that and see what's changed, what hasn't changed, who are our resources and who are the system owners, etc. So she gave me, like, she called me when I had my bone skin on Monday and said, okay, I need it by Monday of next week for our Tuesday meeting. But then she said, okay, I need it by Thursday. And when I was talking to her yesterday, she said, I need it today. So I was like, I'm not going to have it today. I just came back from getting an infusion and see my oncologist. So... I did send her an email this morning, letting her know, like, you know, going over what my expectations she has for me. She let me know this highly visible project. That every one of the executive leadership will be looking at this project. I will be managing it. She will support me any way she can. Um, I can't be late with anything because it's something that has to move. And I'm not a person to slag and miss deadlines. It's one of my things I hate, my peeves. But there's a chemo factor and... With that, I don't know how it's going to affect my body. And that's what is kind of stressed me out last night. And um, so I'm blessed I can work 40 hours, get a full-time paycheck from home, and don't have to go back to the office, period. So that's a blessing right there. So I thank God for that. Um, again, my concerns are that. And there's this side effect that can potentially happen. Doesn't mean it will happen. It's called chemo brain. And that means that you're not like an Alzheimer state, but you are... Um, fuzzy and you're not sharp and you got to think um a little bit um harder about things that you normally would know and i'm a business analyst i'm a senior business analyst so with that how does that work and i'm leading the project i don't want to seem like i don't know the materials and i want to be able to lead the, the comp the meeting so that i can um show my strengths and the value and asset so God willing, I can I can schedule these meetings on the week that I don't have chemo. My body's recovering and I don't have that effect. But the only caveat is that it's a global organization. I've got to try to have everyone be able to attend it. So we'll see. Maybe they can record it for people who can't attend it. I don't know. Um, so just pray for me with that. And overall, um, besides God giving me the assurance that I was going to live and this disease will not be unto death. I did never thought that, just not for once, nor did I ever blame God, never, and never ask why God. So, because God told me a long time ago, I'm going to be sharing my story with lots of people, and some of you might be like, oh, I would never say that on Facebook or YouTube, and you know, she just tell, doesn't have any filter on what she talks about, and talking about her breasts and everything else, but... I'm going to tell my story, and there is a scroll button in the name of Jesus. You could just scroll past it. But for those of us who want to know, we should know. And I want to share this tidbit with you that I found yesterday that um, pancreatic, um, excuse me, that prostate cancer in men is in the same um, Burka family as breast cancer. So if you've had a direct family member, a father, an uncle, or brother who's had prostate cancer, you need to have this test done. I think it's BRCA to see whether or not you are positive. If you're positive, um, it means that you have a higher risk of developing breast cancer. That risk also is elevated if you have had not had any children and other things like obesity. 
increases that risk. There's a couple of other things. You might want to check with the American Cancer Society, which I also found out we have a local office in Cedar Knolls. So if you don't even have a ride, they schedule volunteers, give their time to take you to and from chemo appointments. I mean, how beautiful is that? They also have a service for wigs. Um, I haven't come to a decision with that. There's a, there's a new project called the Rapunzel Project that um, you wear a cold cap. It's a velvet helmet. You wear it an hour before chemo, during the entire chemo treatment, which might up to be up to three hours, and then three hours afterwards. So it's a whole day with this sub-zero. It has got to be less than zero degrees on your head. The, the theory behind it is that it freezes the follicles of your hair follicles so that as chemo travels through every part of your body, I don't care what kind of chemo you have, it travels through every part of your body and it kills rapidly dividing cells. We have rapidly dividing cells in our hair follicles. We have it also in our, um, our um, bone marrow and I think, I guess the hair bone. I want to say breast, but I can't remember the third one with surety. But anyhow, it kills them all. That's why people lose their hair and have alopecia. So the Rapunzel Project gives free wigs. Um, so when I called the American Cancer Society, they made the referral for me yesterday um, as an option. I, you know you know that I went through being natural, had my hair cut this short, and now it's longer. It looks ratty right now because... I didn't get it done yet. You know, yeah, Flocka, you got to come see me. But just for a wash and a roller set, and I can show you the materials they said to put in your hair, not put in your hair. Um, the drugs that I will be on, the chemo drugs for the first two months are very strong, and there is an, more than 80% likelihood that I will lose all of my hair. And I will lose my eyebrows and my eyelashes. Um, so the Rapunzel Project will get the free wig. She asked me, what color, what style, and what length do you want? I was like, um... I guess 14 inches, but I don't know because another thing is that with chemo, chemo can irritate the scalp because the follicles as they're dying and being killed, they um, itch and are irritated. So even though you wear a cap, you still are irritated and it itches you, but maybe it won't be as bad because, you know, as a black woman, we're used to wearing, well, many of us used to wearing weaves and wigs, so maybe it won't, but we'll, I'll think about it. Mostly... I'm really trying to come to terms with the fact of just going um, bald, making sure my makeup's on point. Um, there's another project. It's like Love One or Love Cares. That's something like that. That's through the American Care Society. They have so many programs. They meet every other month here in Mars, the Memorial Hospital, with the exception of next month because of it being um, the Labor Day weekend, which is also my ninth wedding anniversary weekend. And they have a cos licensed cosmetologist that comes in and gives beauty tips on how to use the stencils for eyebrows so that women will have eyebrows and how to put apply um, false eyelashes since those are things that are lost. And then you have the wigs and weaves and they style them for you or they show you different tips. I just think that's just awesome. And a lot of women don't know. So I will tell you about that. So now you know. And for each one, you teach one and you share it with someone else, okay? So the other thing about my Facebook post, um, I decided that I'm going to make a separate page on YouTube. Um, I do have link. Uh, my links are all surviving breast cancer. And I have either after the lump and what day it is, like today, how I'm feeling. And then I also have surviving breast cancer for each stage of the process I'm going through. So I share raw information. You'll see when I meet with my doctor and he goes over my pathology results, um, when I went and got my MRIs done, I have them, the doctors or the uh, radiologists talk about what's going on, what to expect, what results mean, because someone who is new, they're going to be, unfortunately with breast cancer, they're going to be hundreds of thousands of pennies beef side. And so this disease is eradicated. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of women who come behind me who do not know this information. And if they can, the first thing that happens when you hear you have a lump and it's a solid mass and then you get the biopsy done after that and you find it's cancer, you think you're immediately going to die. But there's invasive, non-invasive, invasive when it's just localized cancer, when it got to lymph nodes. Even when it got to lymph nodes, it spread and metastasized. That those, all those things are factors. And I didn't know that. And that's why I passed out. And people say, oh, you're a strong woman. I passed out 
at the radiologist's office when he said it's a solid mass and you've got to rule out it's cancer and it's pretty large. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot with that. So I just want you to know that if you want to see the videos, they'll probably be on a new YouTube channel. I'll probably do that this weekend. Sometimes I'm really busy and I just want to take time out to write this, do this video. Sorry so long, but it's really important that I get this information out to everybody. And the, the YouTube video will have all the information there and you can subscribe to it. And so that way, if you want to watch it, you don't have to worry about looking at my newsfeed with all these things. I know some people might feel like I might, if, if it's a, how I'm feeling, I'll of course post that. But any informational things such as this, I will put on YouTube so that I won't have these videos where you can see them, even though you can scroll past or unsubscribe to me. But I'm still going to just do it differently because the mission and assignment God has gave, given me is to tell my story. And I thought my story was going to be about being a single parent, the mistakes I've made in my life, the consequences of those mistakes, and then the restoration process. I never knew my journey would include breast cancer. So as that new chapter is developing and being added, I want to share that and I will share it with people. And so this is the mission and why I do it. In case people say, why do I do it? Everyone's not going to get it, understand and agree. But the good thing is I don't live for you. I live for God. And if God has given me an assignment, I cannot fail him because I want God to say, well, good, thy good and faithful servant. He can't say that if you're not going to be obedient. So um, I think that's it. We talked about all those things. Oh, and um, I think I talked to you about the bilateral mastectomy. We did decide to do that. That's not until February after the chemo's done. Um, so I'm not going to really think about that too much. So I really don't know a lot of information about that. I know that when I'm going to have reconstructive surgery immediately after the breasts are removed, um, and I call my insurance and they do cover it. It's a $250 copay. But what's $250 for some going from these big E's to a size C for Christ? And that um, they will never be saggy. I know Antonio Lopez, my husband's going to love that. So, you know, and I am losing the weight. Uh, my doctor suggested that I don't lose weight so quickly because he wants me to be not be like weak during a chemo. But I mean, I could drink protein shakes. You can get protein from other things besides animal fat. Um, Cause I did lose 14 pounds already and yay. And I know, listen, we down to how many chins guys. Now this right here is not really my chin. That's my neck. The chins. We just got the one. Can I get a witness? Oh yeah. We have in less chin. They are going somewhere so continue to keep praying for me god is awesome he is so faithful to his word and i love him survivor mode 